Hi there, my name's Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations, and in this video, I'll be having a look at the Blue Scuzzy DB25 External. I recently reviewed the ridiculously small Zulu Scuzzy Pico Slim. In that video, I did some benchmarks with the Blue Scuzzy External, but the model I had was old and large. The Blue Scuzzy External has seen some significant refinements since then, and is now much smaller. I figured it was only fair for me to take a closer look at the new Blue Scuzzy DB25 External. The Blue Scuzzy is the brainchild of Eric Helgeson and got its name because the first revision of the Blue Scuzzy utilised the Arduino Blue Pill development board to create a very simple and inexpensive Scuzzy emulator. The first Blue Scuzzy revision is based on the Ard Scuzzino STM32 by ZTTO, which is based on Ard Scuzzino by Tambo. Fast forward a year or two and Rabbit Hole Computing, the people responsible for the Zulu Scuzzy, revised that code to work with the very small but powerful Raspberry Pi RP2040 CPU. This immediately saw a huge performance increase for the new Zulu Scuzzy RP2040 range. Eric and the team of Blue Scuzzy contributors utilised and modified this code to create the Blue Scuzzy V2, which uses the RP2040 powered Raspberry Pi Pico development board instead of the old Arduino Blue Pill. This resulted in the same sort of performance increase as the Zulu Scuzzy equivalent. Over time, there have been a number of features added to the code, such as the Blue Scuzzy toolbox, support for the Wi Fi module of the Pico W, ROM drive, and initiator mode. One of the most important things to remember about the Blue Scuzzy V1 and V2 is that it has an open source license, which basically means you can download everything you need to build these for yourself. You can build as many as you like, the only thing you can't do is sell them, unless you're an authorised reseller. This is extremely appealing to me because I have so many vintage Macs. It allows me to put a SCSI emulator in all of them at a very low cost. If you want a blue SCSI, you have a few options. You can buy one from a reseller, either fully assembled or in a kit form, where you solder the through-hole components yourself. The other option is to make them yourself from scratch. Download the PCB Gerber files and use a company like PCBWay to have them built. But unlike the Blue Scuzzy version 1, the version 2 has lots of small surface mount components, and for many people, that's a little overwhelming. So the alternative is to get the PCB with all the surface mount components already soldered in place. The downside to this method is there is an economy of scale. You need to get a minimum amount of boards made up for it to be cost effective. Because I love surface mount soldering, I just get the bare PCBs, order all the components from LCSC Electronics, and then assemble them on demand. When I get another vintage Mac, I just build another blue SCSI, and then order new boards or components when they run out. This allows me to build a blue SCSI external like this for incredibly cheap. How cheap? Well, I can make one of these Wi-Fi blue SCSI externals for around one-fifth the price of buying an assembled unit from a local reseller. Getting the PCB made with PCB Way is a piece of cake. Firstly, download the Blue Scuzzy V2 source. Inside the archive, you'll find a hardware folder, and in that is a DB25 external folder. In there, you'll find the Gerber zip file. Now select PCB Instant Quote from the PCB Way website and click the Quick Order PCB link. Press the Add Gerber File button and upload the Blue Scuzzy Gerber zip file. The only change to the defaults I'll be making are to make the solder mask blue and to change my quantity from 5 to 10. The cost of making up 10 boards is just 5 US dollars plus shipping, which is a pretty amazing deal if you ask me. As I mentioned, I'm only getting boards and won't be getting any PCB assembly done, but this is something PCBWay can provide as well. In fact, the number of different services PCBWay provide is quite dizzying. Also included in the Blue Scuzzy source is the BOM, or Bill of Materials. 
This conveniently lists all of the LCSC Electronics product codes, which makes it really easy for ordering. Some of the components are so cheap it makes sense to order in large quantities, like these resistors. I only need a handful of them, but buying a thousand costs less than one dollar. So now I have plenty of spares. You will also need to source the DB25 male connector and Raspberry Pi Pico, but these are very easy to find from a number of providers. I received my Blue SCSI PCBs from PCBWay in just a few days, and they look great. They also threw in an extra, so I now have 11 blank boards. Now it's time for the fun process of surface mount soldering all of the components in place. And when I say fun, I'm being quite sincere. I really enjoy this part. During the assembly of the Blue SCSI external, I made a mistake. The screen printing clearly shows these two resistors should run perpendicular to the capacitors next to them, but I accidentally mounted them parallel. Needless to say, the Blue SCSI didn't work like this, so I had to fix it. The assembly took around 40 minutes, but I think I'll be able to shave a few minutes off that for the next one. I have the finished Blue SCSI external here, and as you can see, it's a lot smaller than the earlier revision of the Blue SCSI V2 external, but still quite a bit bigger than the Zulu SCSI Pico Slim. One of the Blue SCSI's best features is its price, and pretty much any criticism I might have about the design relates to that. For example, I don't really like the way the USB port sticks out the side, but its position is dictated by the position of the Pico. Moving the USB port would mean adding another port onto the Blue SCSI PCB, and that would increase the cost. I also don't really like these little bikini SD card slots, but the larger pushy clicky slots are way more expensive. The fact that I can build a Blue SCSI external so cheaply means I can have one unit permanently set up with System 6, one with System 7, one with System 7.5, and so forth. This is really handy when you have a huge collection of vintage Macs of different ages. There are a couple of things I think could be improved upon though. The first would be to start using a straight connector like the Zulu SCSI and mounting the PCB in the center. I actually think this is a great way of dealing with those Macs that have the plastic ridge under the SCSI connector. Those Macs have loads of room above the connector, but very little underneath. So any way of lifting the board up a bit is beneficial. There might be some concern that the joint between the connector and PCB wouldn't be strong enough like this, but that's just not the case. This connection is absolutely rock solid. I also don't like the way the Pico mounts on the PCB with headers and is mounted above other components, including the activity light. I mentioned I made a mistake while building my first Blue SCSI external, so I was keen to check all my soldering. But once the Pico is mounted, I can't check any components under it. I think surface mounting the Pico on the underside of the board, like the Zulu SCSI, is a better solution. It allows for a flush mount and doesn't obscure any other components. Doing it that way would actually make the whole thing about a millimetre thinner and it would remove the need for these annoying headers and reduce the amount of soldering to build the kit. Now I need to load the Blue SCSI firmware onto the Pico. Firstly, I'll visit the Blue SCSI GitHub page and select the latest release of the firmware and download the UF2 file. Once it's downloaded, I just hold down the boot select button of the Pico and then plug it into a computer with a USB cable. A drive will mount onto your computer's desktop named RPI RP2. Just copy the downloaded UF2 file across to the RPI drive. Once complete, the Pico will restart and disappear from your desktop. Now it's ready for use and some benchmarking. I'm using System 8.6 on a PowerMac 7300 with a 400 MHz G3 upgrade card. This is not an exhaustive test, just a basic speed test from SCSI Director Pro. I'll be comparing the speed to the earlier revision of the Blue SCSI external and the Zulu SCSI Pico Slim. These are all external SCSI devices, so it should be a pretty good comparison. I'm also going to include the results of a Blue SCSI internal. 
this should get faster results as it can take advantage of this Mac's faster internal SCSI bus. All tests were performed with the same SanDisk Ultra Micro SD card. All of the blue SCSIs have a slower seek time than the Zulu SCSI, so the Zulu SCSI must be using some sort of special source. The read times are all very similar for the internal devices, around 6,000 kilobytes per second. Interestingly, the older revision of the Blue SCSI V2 external actually achieved the fastest read time, but also the slowest write time. The new revision of the Blue SCSI external had the best write times of all external devices tested. Not surprisingly, the Blue SCSI internal got the best results thanks to this Mac's faster internal SCSI bus. There's one last thing I want to do, and that's design a new case. There is a 3D printable case STL file included with the Blue SCSI source, but I'm not really a fan. I think it's too flimsy and lacks a little finesse. This is my design here. The Blue SCSI snaps into the base, then the two case halves snap together. And I've added these little grooves to assist in separating the two halves with a screwdriver. I've also built the bottom half so that it stops short of the connector. This does leave the connector pins exposed, but it also means a nice flush connection with the Macs that have a plastic ridge under the connector. I also added this button for the boot select switch. I made the plastic thin here so it would have some flex, and I added this little cylinder to line up with the boot select button. I also put a little cutout circle on the outside of the top case to indicate where to press. This design is available for download on Thingiverse. The Blue SCSI external has definitely come a long way, and while I may have a few criticisms, I really like it. It's very compact, fast, and these external units are incredibly convenient for diagnostic purposes. If you have an old Mac with a failing internal hard drive, you can just boot up from the external and run your diagnostics tools or file recovery. They're also great for transferring large amounts of files from one vintage computer to another. And if you're using the Wi-Fi version of the Pico, this is a really easy way of getting your vintage Mac onto your network. The Blue SCSI Toolbox is another great addition, allowing you to copy files onto the Mac disk image from the XFAT partition. Be aware that the Blue SCSI external does not have configurable termination, its termination is always on. So if you plan to use it in a chain of devices, it must be the last device in the chain. I've put links in the description for where to buy an assembled or kit version of the Blue SCSI external. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you like this sort of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.